Welcome back to my shop. My name is Guy and today I'm going to show you how to make beautiful wooden hinges like these with the incredibly easy to use Anchor Eye Box and the Anchor Hinge Crafter. These can really add to the overall beauty of your handcrafted projects like this box I recently built. So let's get started. Now for this demonstration I'm going to be making half inch hinges. I've already got some material planed down to half inch thickness. I've got some maple and cherry. You're going to need a half inch straight cutting bit a half inch beading bit, the anchor hinge crafter drilling jig which comes with the drill bit. You're going to need some eighth inch brass stock. Now these are just brazing bars that I found at the home store and I'm going to be using the eye box to cut the hinges or the finger joints for these. So let's get the wood prepared first. I've installed the half inch beading bit in my router table. I've got a piece of the material here. What I want to do is I want to lower this bit slowly until it just clears the bottom of this. And that's about it right there. So I'm going to lock this down. And then we'll set the fence up. I position the beading bit so it's at its widest point away from the router fence. And what I want to do is just slowly bring the fence over and I want to cover up just a little bit of this curve on the inside. I want to leave about a sixteenth of an inch there. That looks pretty good. Now with the fence set at the right distance and the bit set to the right height, I'm going to take one of the cutoffs from one of the blanks that I made before and run a test cut. Well, I've run the test piece and it came out perfect. There's no ridges on either side of the piece really nice and flat and I've got this little flat right on the edge here and this is really important because if you take off all this material on the leading edge of the piece as you push it through the back of the piece once it gets the other side of the fence it's gonna kick up a little bit and leave a divot on this side and we don't want that. Well, I'm gonna cut the round over on the end. You want to make sure that you don't cut it on the long grain that you cut it on the end grain side. Now since we are cutting end grain I've got a good rubber sole push block. I'm going to keep even pressure down and against the fence and I'm going to give it nice consistent speed as I go through. Now I've got this nice bull nose here. I can rest this vertical against the fence. I'm going to take my push block and I'm going to run it vertically across that piece also. Now that the barrels have been cut for the hinges, I need to increase the width of the dado on here to actually make the leaf for the hinge. So I've installed the half inch bit here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this upside down. I'm going to place it up against there, and I'm going to slowly lower the router bit until it just goes into that groove that was there already from when we cut the barrels. There we go. So now I have the height set, I can lock that in place. I'm bringing the fence up here and I've got its bit at its widest point going forward and towards the fence. I'm just going to take the piece of material, I'm going to put it in between the two. I'm just going to position it so it's pretty darn close to that piece. It doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to be a touching, but you don't want it sticking out real far either. And that's pretty good and I'm just going to lock that down in place. Now that I have the fence set at the correct position, I'm going to use my Inker Alos Positioner to get the depth or the width of that dado correct. So I'm going to set it at a half inch because I know I've got a half inch bit. I'm going to make the first cut and then I'm going to move it over a quarter inch at a time until I get one and a quarter inches. What I'm really looking for is a one and a quarter inch leaf on the other side of the barrel. So I've got the anchor eye box on my table saw right now. And I've also installed a half inch dado stack in it. Uh, I'm choosing to use a table saw. You can also use a router table for this. This eye box has already been configured for use with my table saw and it's been calibrated for it. Uh, I'm not going to go through the calibration method. There's a video that comes with the uh, eye box and also the instructions are very, very clear and concise on how to do that. So what I've done first is I've taken the zero clearance fence and I moved it over to a space where I know I'm going to get full support. I'm just going to bring it up to there and I've also raised the blade so that it's just a little bit high of the surface of this material. 
Now that I've got that side, I want to make sure that these side fences are locked down. I'm just going to make a cut through my backer plate. So I've got a piece of scrap material here, and I'm just going to place it up against the first stop. I'm going to take a clamp and clamp it in place. And I'm going to go ahead and make a cut through the test material. So now I've got to adjust these two fingers to fit inside this slot. So there's a little locking nut here I need to undo. And I'm just going to start slowly turning this knob here forward to bring them closer together. Now I've got the fingers closer together, I can drop that in there. And there's some slop there, I need to get rid of that. So I'm going to turn the wheel clockwise. Well, I've got those two fingers adjusted until they just touch the inside. There's no slop at all, but they're not real tight either. I don't want the finger joints real tight, or you're not going to be able to open and close the hinges correctly. So now that I've got that set, I just need to lock the jig. Now they have the distance set for the joints themselves. I'm just going to take these two supports, I'm going to move this over, I'm just sighting down it 3 sixteenths, a quarter inch away from the blade. Tighten it down. Now on this side, I'm going to push it all the way up against that finger. Now using this jig couldn't be simpler. All I'm going to do is going to take one of the hinge blanks, I'm going to take the barrel side and put it down, and I'm going to put it against that first outside indexing pin. Then I'm going to clamp it down, make a cut, and then I'm going to put it that cut right over both pins, make another cut, and then just keep going on down the line until I have one side complete. Well, I've got the guard in place. I'm just going to take the first hinge blank. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to make sure it's butted up against that first pin like I showed you before, and that it's flat against that bottom support. I'm going to take a clamp and clamp it in place, and I'm going to go ahead and make the first cut. Well, I've made that first cut, and all I'm going to do is take this and put it over both pins. I'm going to reclamp it down, and then make the second cut, and then just keep going on down the line until I have one side of this, this blank completely done. Well, that's what the cuts look like on the first blank. I'm going to go ahead and do the other three, but I'm only going to do one side of the blanks for now. So I've got the first set of fingers cut, and uh, this is how they come together. They're snug, but not real tight, so you can move them around. But the biggest thing is there's no top to bottom play at all. So I've taken the blade guard off so you can see how I'm going to set up for the next set of cuts. I've taken one of the blanks, I'm going to take the leaf side with the dados in it, put that up against the fence and put it over the alignment pins like that. Then I'm going to take the next board and put it against here with the dado facing out. Remember I always want to make sure I have material supported on the backer board right here. So I'm just going to put on there like that. I'm going to make the cut, then move it over, make the next cut, and then keep going on down the line. Well, this is Inker's Hinge Crafter Jig, and I can tell you this thing is a beast. It's a solid piece of aircraft grade aluminum, all CNC milled, and uh, it's big and it's heavy duty. The way this works is pretty simple. There's little barrels on the inside of here that correspond with the finger joints we cut in the hinges before. And they're sizes for 3 eighths, half inch, 5 eighths, and 3 quarters. I mentioned before it does come with a drill bit, and with this you can drill hinges up to 10 and a half inches in length. Ours are going to be 6 inches. It comes with a clamping knob and also a clamping pad. And let me show you how this works, and again, very easy to do. So we're going to be making half inch hinges, so these are the barrels for that. I've already installed the locking nut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my vise, tighten it so it doesn't move around. Then I'm going to take one of the... Uh, 
blanks that we made before. I'm going to take the barrel, and these are simply going to go into here like this. I want to make sure that it's firmly seated in there. Then I'm going to take this little clamping pad, I'm going to slide it in and lock it into position. Well, I've got the bit chucked up in my drill, and I'm ready to start drilling the holes for the hinge pins. This is all secure. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drilling these out. So after you've drilled through the last one here, all you do is undo this, knock this clamping pad out, and then pull this up. With the hinge blank out of there, I need to make sure I clean up any little pieces of wood that are in there. Any little pieces will really throw off those holes, so I've just got some compressed air. I'm just going to blow those out. So I'm just going to take the piece. I've still got two more holes to drill. I'm just going to put it in here. Make sure it's firmly seated all the way in. Put the clamping pad back in. And tighten it down. So there's the holes drilled through the barrels for the hinge pin. It came out pretty nice. I just need to go and do the other side and then the other three pieces. I'm going to release the hinges from the blank now. I've got the fence set an inch and a half. That's a half inch for the barrel and I want a one inch leaf. I've also made the special push stick for this. Now this is included in the plans with the hinge crafter. So I just need to cut these out. I've cut a piece of brass for the hinge pin and it's a little bit shorter than the overall length of this. I've got two pieces. I've got one cherry, one maple, just to give a little contrast, I guess. It kind of looks cool. And I'm just going to fit these together until they're about lined up, as close as I can get it by eye anyways. I'll put over that little hole right there. I'll take the hinge pin. I've got a hammer or a mallet. Very lightly, I'm going to start tapping this in. There you have it, a wooden hinge. Now we know this hinge as it sits right now is six inches. What if we wanted to make it into two smaller hinges? That's pretty easy. With the hinge pin still installed, I'm going to fold it over like this. Now I want to have on this leaf right here, not on the other, on the other side, but on this leaf on top here, I want to have a barrel on each side. So I'm going to go one, two, three. I need to cut away this with that being to the waist side of the blade. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three. Make a mark here. And make a mark here. So I need to make three cuts. One here, one here, and one here. And that'll release two separate hinges for this. What I need to do now is, while this is in this position, I need to pull this hinge pin out. I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers and it should pop right out. All right, easy. So now that I've got that done, I've made a special jig that goes on my miter gauge. Plans for that are included with the manual for the hinge crafter. Well, here's the sled to cut the hinges. It's very simple. It's just two pieces of MDF that I have glued together at 90 degrees. There's a kerf line here. I've got it mounted to my miter fence. This will work on any miter fence. I have mine to set up to work on my anchor fence. So all I need to do is line up those marks I made before with the kerf line here and just make those cuts. And there you have it. Two perfectly sized two and a half inch hinges. So as you can see these hinges are really easy to make with the Anchor Eye Box and Anchor Hinge Crafter. Lots of different sizes can be made and they're a perfect complement to your next handmade project. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.